we've covered vectors so far, and what I'd like to do in this session is to cover operators. Now, if you look at Schrodinger's equation, we have some idea what psi is, uh, and in terms of it being a vector, uh, and the operators in this equation include the big H on the right, which is the Hamiltonian operator, and on the left we have the IH bar d d t, uh, which is another operator. So let's look at what operators actually are. To concern ourselves mainly with linear operators, a linear operator takes all the kets in a vector space and maps them into other kets, and also takes all the bra bras in a in the dual space and maps them into other brands. Linear operators also have additional properties, namely commutativity with the scalars and distributivity um, over vector addition. And that applies both for cats and for brands. Now I'd like to modify what you're looking at to follow a certain notational convention, namely that the linear operator omega acting on vector x will yield a vector omega x. And similarly, on for bras, uh, a linear operator acting on a bra on the right uh, will give you the operator dagger bra. bra. And we'll uh, listen, or we'll concern ourselves with what uh, the dagger means in a short while. Now, given any x and an operator omega, we have uh, a another cat omega x in the same vector space, um, and we can consider the dual of omega x in the dual space as the bra omega x. Now, let's define the adjoint of operator omega written as omega dagger, uh, to be the operator which acts on the right of the dual of x to give you the dual of omega x. Now, one thing to note is that omega dagger dagger is equal to omega. That is, if you take the adjoint twice, we'll get the original uh, operator back. Now this is nice because this means that our convention earlier of uh, calling the result of omega acting on the right of a bra omega dagger bra on the uh, inside the bracket notation. Um, so that's it for that. And another thing to to note, and this is where we finally figure out what permission means, is that. An operator is permission if it is its own adjoint, which means omega equals omega dagger, if omega is the operator we're talking about. We looked earlier at how um, an orthonormal basis would give us components that we can place now into a column vector for a vector, or a column matrix for a vector. Um, and the conjugate transpose would be these um, bras, which are uh, seen as row vectors. Uh, so now let's turn our attention to how to do something similar for matrices. Um, so again, we start with an orthonormal basis, um, just numbers 1 through n for the vectors, just symbolically. Um, now if you consider any ket v transformed by a linear operator, uh, we get uh, the vector omega v. Now, if you look at for at the components of omega v, which is a vector, uh, we get that by taking the inner product with uh, a basis vector i and the uh, the result would of course be the projection onto the basic vector vector i, and that is the ith component of uh, omega v. And of course, omega v, again, is just um, the operator omega acting on v. So we can rewrite that other equation, or the, uh, the inner product, as 
I uh, uh, taken the inner product with the operator omega acting on V. So we can now take that original vector V and express them as the sum of the projections onto the basis vectors. And once we do that and take the and move the sum inside, we see that the final transform vectors, vector omega v, is the, or the component of the transform vector omega v is the sum from 1 to n of the, follow, the inner product of uh, i to uh, omega j times the inner product of j and v. And we're taking, of course, j from 1 to n. Now, if we take the n equations for each of the n components of the transform vector and place them uh, one on top of each other, uh, we get the same thing as if we had multiplied the original column vector times this a particular matrix to give us the transform uh, column, uh, a transform column vector, which is equal to what we would expect uh, omega v to be. So when we look at the ith row and jth column of the matrix that we generated, it is basically just the inner product of i times the operator, the operator acting on um, a cat j. So at this point, we now can get all the elements of uh, an n by n matrix, which will represent our linear operator. So let's stop right there. Um, I think that's enough for matrices for now. There's a lot more we can say. Um, but next time, we'll cover eigenvalues and their corresponding uh, eigen kets, and we'll tell you what those mean. Um, and we may cover a few more things that we can do once we have that built up.